Uh, asked the CMO, uh, CMO and I think uh, 
the, the cabinet uh, via the district administration of Ernakulo for approval to run a program in Ernakulo. And we got an approval, we got <coughs> an actual government order, um, probably somewhere around here. But we actually got a government approval saying that go ahead, start using the software, start using the software for the long term. This is the initial meetings that we have, we have done in the, uh, in the Ernakulo district uh, administration because we were actually looking at what they were doing without software without doing anything. And we're looking at all the pain points. Like, there's a, if you get a call that says, this patient is about to die, you need to get, get him immediately. Now you don't know where he is. You don't know where he's going. You don't know what hospital is free. You don't know if there's an FLTC. You don't know if there's a nurse shortage there. You don't know how many patients are there. You don't know how many patients are currently being shifted to where, wherever. Now all these are problems. And you see these problems first time in the office. Now your solution is to build technical solutions or engineering solutions. So uh, again, some more pictures. They were doing uh, these are telemedicine consultations that were happening during the COVID times, and that's Sham. You know him. Uh, yeah. So these are some of the dashboards. He, uh, I think, I think these are, this is Metabase. Someone was mentioning Metabase earlier. So we ran a lot of uh, lot of non-technical solutions, like make may, uh, trying to understand what exactly is needed. So most of these non-technical solutions are like Google Sheets and stuff, like trying to capture what the exact information or what, what, what exactly is required. And then we started building this. We built a lot of stuff. I just want to make it clear. And we built a capacity uh, map that is that captured our entire of Kerala, how much patients were there, and all these data was directly fed in from the numbers. We made a patient management system. We made a journal system for doctors. We made iRevsha, that was a uh, telemedicine management software. We built a food delivery app in, in partnership with the FIC. And we built a facility management app to understand how much facilities are, how much hospitals are around <coughs> India, or around Kerala, and how much was available. We built a telemedicine con uh, application built on Wales, and this would manage all the telemedicine calls. We built an application for trucks to manage trucks because that was also an issue. We built <laughs> we, because there was, at some point there was a large influx of people coming in from abroad, and they had to stay somewhere. That was also a problem. We built a software for that. Stay. I think some of the people in the I'm not, I'm not sure where, but some of the, the this was actually built by Indian students. I remember that. We built a dashboard for the CMO team because they wanted to get all this data in a single dashboard. We built that. We built a, an ambulance management app again with the FI. We built a medicine delivery app. We built a curfew pass management app, which is still used by the Kerala police for some reason. <laughs> we built a we built bots around all these things. We built call center management applications and a ton more that we can't list because if you look at the Look up the repository, you can see a ton of these projects. And we didn't build it like we just we didn't just sit down and started building things and just putting it out there. You know what anyone can deploy this and anyone can make it work. We actually built it, deployed it and actually made them use it and then started to solve their problems. Make sure that whatever we are building is actually serving a purpose. We're not like doing this randomly. <laughs> Everyone who's working in this project had a full-time job. This was on the side for free. Voluntary, everything is open. And uh, one of the things we, we used to do was, uh, like, I, I think everyone should do this. So, so asking someone, to, if you build a software, you ask someone who's completely non technical to take a look at it and see what they think of it. This is mostly like user research or user experience research or whatever you want to call it. So, we had Matthew, so he's a district program manager that is at IMA, uh, in a medical association. So, we would build the software and we would ask him to use it. And he, he would actually click on buttons saying, this is this too big, this is too small. Because as engineers, we don't focus on user level problems. We don't know that perspective. And it, no matter what we try to do, we won't get that perspective. We have to actually ask them to use it and then understand what their problem is. Now, they might have weird problems, which we never even thought of. But you have to address it. You have to actually think about it. And that's one of the key reasons on why, how, how your side project and an actual project differs. Because you're not building it for yourself, you're building it for others. So others should use it. Okay, so again, a lot of what we ourselves we did, uh, again with the normal <coughs> presentation, mock films, we would have patients placed across the, across Ernagulam and you would see how much of uh, our software was using and how much they were suffering. And again, this is really important because this is how we understood what all problems are there in the system, what to improve and what we could do in the future. And uh, again, these are mock film pictures uh, for you guys. Again, this is the garment order that I was searching for. Okay, so 
one major problem we had was all these actually reverse line signal senders were popping up. This is a this is the project that we stuck on. Like we wanted to build in the long term. So if you see this as these SLPs, what are problems do you think will happen? So let's say Ernagulam's uh, COVID spike numbers are going to spike by 5,000 percent. So immediate solution: build up hospitals, two or maybe like 20 of them, with each with 200 capacity. What do you think is going to happen? What is the problem, immediate problem that might happen? Shortage of doctors. Sorry? Shortage of doctors. Shortage of doctors. One. What else? Shortage of beds. Sorry? Bed shortage. Bed shortage. Even if you have like long time to build hospitals, right? Sorry? In order to build hospitals, you will need. Yeah, long time. Uh, but let's assume it's built by right now. Let's assume that all 20 hospitals are built. We have got 20 times 200 capacity. What are problems are going to happen? Sorry? Accessibility. Accessibility. Yes, one problem. Keep going. Sorry? Someone said something. Operations. Operations. Yeah. So these uh, these complete facilities were nursed by like five or six nurses with their PPE kit on. Now you can't expect them to manage 200 patients by keeping track of patients' name in books. Right? That's that's just not going to happen. Even Google Sheets are not going to help. And there is no software that can be deployed in hospitals that way, that will just work. Now, if a patient is coming in into this hospital, you can't even get their name properly because these are probably unconscious patients. Now, how do you understand their medical history? How do you understand what all, what is their like actual history? Where do you shift them to? What doctor is supposed to look at it? What doctor looked at him before? None of that data is there. And all of this is happening in between, a, in, in the middle of a pandemic. Everyone is scared, right? So, a lot of problems you can solve there. First one is facility management. Facility management is understanding how much capacity each hospital has, how much capacity, how much type of bed each hospital has, and how much can, how much is free, and making this available to everyone else. So if this hospital knows that how much it is free, it, it is useless. But if the other facility knows how much this hospital has uh, free beds, then it makes sense because now they can shift patients over here based on their availability. Now everyone can shift patients over here based on their availability. Now, if you add in a central shifting facility or sh a central shifting control, they can shift patients and to ensure that none of them are suffocated. Like, there is no one FLEC with 200 patients and the rest of them is zero. They, are, they can also control that all the, all the critically ill patients go to actual hospitals while medium to mid-level patients go to the FLEC. Because you don't need like expert care here, you just need nurses and just basic control. Make sense? Now, you also need uh, to ensure that patient history is done. So if you're shifting a patient from one hospital to the other, his uh, medical history is also transferred along with it. Now you have UHI and you have a bunch of technology that are, that are being built for the solution, but for this problem, but then we had nothing. So how do you control all this? How do you build solutions? Now again, we, we saw actual people. Like uh, Initially, there were actually just people uh, sitting in you know, rooms, getting calls, saying that this patient needs to be transferred from this hospital. Not uh, We don't know where. We just know that there is no availability here. Now, he has to call every other hospital or get an old sheet uh, to understand where this patient has to be shifted to. Now, while he makes these calls, the patient might actually die because he's waiting there without a hospital. Now, that's, that's something that we solved very well. And we had maps like these for the entire state. So, we, with these red dots you see are areas with hospitals which are full. Green would mean that it's uh, you know, kind of empty. And each box here, these are actually boxes. Uh, these boxes represent different types of hospitals. And we built it based on air quality. And you can see their oxygen levels. So we would see, uh, we would predict when a hospital would run out of oxygen. And we also, also had an oxygen app which would automatically place orders for oxygen. So, and we would track when the oxygen actually reaches there. And these circles you see are state level uh, hospital utilization. How much utilization is there for, for, this, for the entire district? Uh, is there an emergency? Should we start building uh, you know, FLTC right now? So we need all that kind of information. Like there, at the end, you can see those are ICUs. How much ICUs are available right now in Kerala? How much of them are being used? And how much we can start? Uh, how much do we need to shift outside the system? All these really important uh, data. There's a video. I'm not going to show it. I can actually show uh, a small demo of care. So yeah, this is the software care. This is the patient management software. This is the demo instance, no production data. So this is, a, you can see a bunch of patients already there and there was a shifting page right over here where we could see how many patients are being shifted, 
shifted where and what is their current status. You would look, you would mark them as emergency. You could uh, actually mark a, a, a particular vehicle number to that, uh, you know, that uh, patient, and then only they would take it. And whenever the patient reaches the, the end facility, all his data was also transferred. So if you know if he had an allergy or something, all that data is also transferred. So we actually look at the problem and then build the solution. And we had the central shifting facility that I talked about earlier. They would actually manage it. This is like a Kanban board for them. Makes sense for them. And again, to just quickly show you, you have got uh, your regular patients listing page. You would actually, this is like a complete hospital management tool. You could look at patient data, you could look at, right now, I'll talk about what these things are, but on that. This is like basic hospital management. Whatever you need in a hospital is already there. And again, open source would completely free. Okay. Let me uh, talk about the next steps of forensic. So what we wanted to build is, we wanted to build a long-lasting thing. So we didn't want to build it and then completely get rid of it. And we understood that from KLRS Cube. Because KLRS Cube has, has anyone heard about KLRS Cube? KLRS Cube during the floods, okay, two people are really good. <laughs> okay, so that was like a flood management app which we built long time back. And it start, it, it was in its peak usage in a week. Like uh, uh, within a week, we had uh, lakhs of people using it. And within another week, we had no one using it. So we built a software which was serving a very short term solution and then no one started contributing to this project. No one uh, contributed to that project and sort of died, maybe in a month or month or so. We didn't want that to happen with uh, you know, care. We wanted to build software that was lasting, long lasting. And we already had a facility management software and we wanted to build something around it so that there are people who can contribute. And that was where Engel, Forensic Engineering Fellowship came in. And we partnered with the ICD to get the best of the best students. We had, I think we selected 30 students from around 1.5 lakh students. And we made them contribute back to Colossi and build new software. Because we knew that that is like the, that is a, one of the sustainable ways we can build more, you know, better software. They were given a stipend and they were, they were allowed to contribute whatever they want to get. We had issues coming in from the ground, they would contribute to that and they can also build, in, build their own features if they want to. So that's what, how we built uh, that. This is like a stat since Corona Zip launched. This is from 2020, so a lot more than right that now. Around 3 lakh patients uh, and with around uh, 1 lakh shipping. We have uh, seen a lot of, we, at some, I, th I think at the peak we had around 1 million requests per hour coming into a server just for district, just for Ernambu. That is how uh, how much care was used in Ernambu, just in Ernambu. And I, I think we were used in Tamil Nadu, Haryana and a couple of other states. And those are all separate departments. Okay, I, I'm, I'm trying to uh, hurry up because I, I know I have only half an hour, so I'm trying to speed up. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so I already gave a quick intro. Now, this is uh, this is why we think Corona Seed succeeded. So, building software that serves a purpose, nothing less. We won't build something that does not serve a purpose. We're not going to build a to do app and just leave it there. That's not going to happen. We have an amazing team, and it's not just me, it's not just five members. We have, I think, around 70 contributors right now, 70 or uh, 80, I think. And understanding problems in detail. And every, everything we, uh, in, uh, the last point was just planning. So everything we built, we planned a long time in the future. We had war room books published. We had, we had a whole page, of, I think a whole uh, git book dedicated to how we would solve the problem. And we did it based on that war book. And or I think uh, those were Sanjay's thing. Those are non-technical stuff. So he was thinking about that, and we were just solving technical problems. So we had a team that would actually do both technical and non-technical stuff. That is really really important. And we were looking at every possible scenario. We were thinking about what if the, what if tomorrow the, there is a new strain that would do much more damage. How would our software scale? How would how would the problem actually sort change based on that? And we built. Uh, we have. If you look at our software, you can see that it changes every day. The database models were changing every day because we wanted to make sure that everything is right and it doesn't break when, when you need it the most. We also built courses just for using care and we have that also deployed so that if someone or if a, a nurse or someone wants to start using care, we we'll just ask them to take the course and then start actually using care. So we were planning for everything. And again, if you were starting to build a project, these are what we learned at scale. What, uh, like, uh, we, this is, these are what we learned about building applications at scale. Now, uh, so uh, again, I think I've, uh, I've 
I've uh, explained most of these topics. One of the things I want to uh, highlight is break the chain of virality because we don't want to build projects that are viral. Because Corona State was not viral. We, 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 we served a lot of people, we solved a lot of problems, because we, but we never wanted to go viral. We wanted to just solve the problem. And stop over in here. We just want to build exactly for what the problem, what, what problem we are trying to solve. Stop building cool stuff. Because we build cool stuff and we are, we are suffering because of that. Because we try to over engineer, build really complicated things and then try to make it work for simple problems. And that backfired so much. We should have just built a Google Pop and just let it do it, let it be, but we built really complex stuff. But we, we understood it, we, we corrected it uh, almost for every problem. And design for extensibility and design for, design for scale. Now, when you say scale, everyone starts to think about let's you know let's say you know, what if tomorrow ten million doctors come and start using it? That is one type of scale. But if you are solving problems, especially in society in India, you need to think about the other type of scale as well. How do you scale this operationally across Kerala? So if you want to uh, deploy it in one place, uh, one taluk in uh, in Arunachal versus deploying it across Arunachal, is a completely different thing. You need to have access controls that allow taluk level or district level or municipality level control. You need to have all that mapped out. You need to ensure that whatever whoever is using it can use it effectively. You need to ensure that there's a reporting structure or operational reporting structure. Make sure that if something goes wrong, who would you report it to? All these things need to be mapped out. If you just build software, none of this is going to work. You need someone who's actually who understands what, what those problems are and solve those as well. And quick hacking solutions, they work, but they don't work for a long time. You need to plan to plan for the future and then build it out. Okay. Yeah, so you went in United Nations who is actually giving out digital public goods. So that's why that's what I can understand. So okay. So next steps for care. Now that the COVID situation is almost under control, the Kerala District Administration stopped using care last year. So now we are we are not actually deployed in any state for COVID. Now we already built a patient management system full hospital management system. Now we want to reuse it. Now we reuse it with tele-ICUs. Tele-ICUs is a project, uh, have you heard about 10 bed ICUs? Anyone? Has anyone heard about Srikant? Or <laughs> anyone, anyone heard about Srikant Adhapuri? e -gauntans? Anyone? Okay. Uh, so these are the folks who built all the cool stuff like UTI, Aadhaar. Srikant Adhapuri was the, uh, the architect of Aadhaar. And these are the people who build software, make it open source, and let India, you know, deploy it. The India stack, if you haven't heard about. UHI is another thing, UPI is another thing, the ONDC that's coming up. All these things are really, really cool stuff. Uh, has anyone heard about ONDC? Okay. okay. I would recommend everyone to read about it, because that's like the next cool thing. And that is going to come. That is going to revolutionize a lot of stuff. And think, um, if, you want, if you don't know about ONDC, think about UPI for Amazon. So, you want to buy things. It's just like a network just for that. Again, I, I don't want to simplify it. All right, uh, coming back to the actual thing what I was trying to say. So there's a project called 10 bed ICU that is by e governments And their problem is very simple. There, there, there are remote parts of India which were like heavily affected by Corona because they, were, they didn't have hospitals there. They didn't have ICUs there. They didn't have good health care in the remote parts of the country. Of, of course, like Bangalore has really good health care. But what about other parts of Canada? What about Mysore? So what a tempered IC was trying to solve is to build ten, uh, just tempered IC in every part of the country, every remote part of the country. And uh, it deploys some kind of solution that would ensure good health care there without uh, you know, a lot of doctor resources. So they wanted to build, they wanted to experiment with Kelly IC, so remote ICs, where they could they could have a hub that is controlling all these uh, you know, remote ICs, like tempered ICs and uh, not waste a lot of resources because you can't get doctors just if you, can, you can't have like full-time doctors on 10 bed ICUs, right? and you need a lot of special care stuff. So we started doing that. We, uh, we, uh, so e government started contributing back to care and started building more and more tools in, uh, in inside care. So we have uh, live patient data monitoring. We've got alerts and we've got built a lot of stuff along in inside care just for this. And that's what we see as the future of care. And again, it's open source. You can come in. You can look at the code. You can build features here, whatever you want. We also integrated with uh, even cameras, so we could uh, we could directly see patients within care. So a doctor can now come into care, see the patient, actually look at him, see what he's doing, get all his vital data, and then make a decision or prescribe him. Care. Uh, 
Uh, we can even look at the live data. We can do whatever we want. We can we have we have everything that that is needed for that IT. So like asset tracking, configuration, inventory management, all of that is built into there. So there's like a one-stop solution that could do everything. Yeah, again, as someone is mentioning MetaBase. This is a MetaBase uh, dashboard for Kerala that the Anagala District Administration was using. So whenever you saw like uh, this, this uh, see, see these articles that A positive people are getting more COVID positive. That is from these dashboards because we had a chart for that, <laughs> because we had data for that. And we had so much data that we could predict with, uh, which ward to lock down because we had live data which ward was getting higher positive. Ethnagulam was acting at the ward level because we had that much data. We could do live lockdowns because we had that much data and they were coming in live. And if you look at look at the data, you can see three spikes. So if everyone was talking about the second wave, we were in the third wave because we knew that and we, we already saw the wave happening. We could even see the wave starting up because we were seeing live data. Just when people were starting to get positive, we could see that right in our dashboard. So this was uh, you know, put up in a 15-inch or 16-inch dashboard, uh, EV, right in the middle of the, the Ethnagulam district administration. Everyone could see this data. And this is why this is being updated, I think, every minute. And yeah, we could also see uh, if, if a wave came in, we have, because we have all this data, all this rich data, and we could also see if this wave was giving more asymptomatic or symptomatic patients. What exactly was the symptom in this wave? What, what was causing the symptom, and where was it being caused? So if there's, if there's a specific variant that is causing a specific symptom, we know which area has that symptom. We have, we have so much data that we can do a lot more planning. And we didn't do any machine learning or artificial intelligence or anything with this data because we never had the time. But we could do so much. And that's just because we collected all this data. So we, the next time we build the tool, we need to think about what we can do with the data. So and we can we have to plan it. Right? Makes sense, right? Again, data visualization. This is what I was showing earlier. So you could see every part of that number of more capacity we had and so on. Okay, I think that's sort of it. There's a video I wanted to show, I don't know if it's on a load, but this is a live deployment of Teli, I think, Teli Manipur. I don't think it's on a load, but I'm just on a, okay, no, there you go. Patient use, there's a doctor actually using it. And the patient, the, there's, this is the hub, so you can see multiple patients are being monitored by the doctor right now. And again, this is a, this is from a free and open source tool. Yeah, it's being deployed, uh, I think, for free by Azure and it's open source, anyone can contact us. And yeah, that's kind of a quick overview about Corona Safe, what we're doing, what we're planning to do ahead. And we have a lot of features requests coming in because now people have started to actually use it in the in the wild, in, in hospitals. There's a lot of feature requests coming in. There's a lot of things to build. So if you are ever looking for something to build, like or learn to build, you can all always check in for us. And if you're, if you're like curious why, like we can't contribute because we don't know the tech stack of this project. I've also built courses that are free. You can pick up the course, you can learn, and then contribute if you want. So we use Django and React mainly. Django courses there, React courses there. If you want to get Yeah. Any questions?